Hi, welcome to Man of Steel Fan Gives Hope and what a great time it's been. I just read out some of the messages. Um, hopefully if I've got time, uh, I'll read them out in the, in the next video. Uh, but right now, this takes... This takes... Uh, I don't know, this takes importance here. Just watch the film, uh, a wee YouTube from Film Junkie. Talks about certified tomatoes and people jumping up and saying this is going to be the best superhero film ever or whatever. And, and, and you know, I follow him and stuff like that. And, and I agree what he says. You know, he was him and I were on, uh, me, I was agreeing with him about how Wonder Woman was going to be praised because it was the first female film, female director and stuff. And, um, and he was also talking about, you know, let's not quickly jump in and say it's it's going to be fantastic and it's going to be this and that. Don't report on it. And it's all, he was saying it was already reporting on best DC and Marvel to be hero film. So that to me shows me that he's not biased because he has been defending uh, a lot of stuff about DC. Uh, but the way he, he explained things, says to me just now, he's level-headed. So once I watched that, I thought, right, we've well, still got a, maybe a couple of days or two and then we'll find out. But here we have Mark Hughes, who is a reporter, journalist or something for Forbes. And he wrote this article which I'm about to read out to you, and I, I friended him on Facebook because, again, it's somebody I agree with. Along the lines I used to agree with Campier, but not along the same lines I used to agree with Campier because I thought he was level-headed, but right now, the way I am, this guy's level-headed. Not just because, you know, he's saying what I want to hear, but I get where he's coming from. So here we go. Uh, if you want to check this out yourself instead of listening to me, please still like or comment below or go to the Man of Steel Band Gives Hope page or go to Forbes. Okay, here we go. Wonder Woman Certified Fresh by Mark Hughes for Forbes. Wonder Woman is, Wonder Woman is the first film for Warner Brothers newly established DC Cinematic Universe to earn the official certified fresh stamp of approval and review aggregate site Rotten Tomatoes. That seal is reserved for movies that score 80% or higher on the site's tomato meter, meaning at least 80% of critics featured on the site, i.e. 8 out of 10, gave the movie a positive or fresh, as RT calls it, review. But Wonder Woman has soared much higher than 80% threshold, indeed, with a current tomato score between 93 and 95. As the views flow in today, it keeps moving up and down the scale between these numbers. The film currently has one of the best scores of any live-action superhero film in history. Where it winds up depends on how the remaining reviews play out, of course. But at this point, with more than 100 reviews counted, it's unlikely the needle will move much, and particularly unlikely it will drop below the 90% range. There are only a handful of live-action superhero films on RT scores of 90% or higher, and it's pretty esteemed group. The Dark Knight and Iron Man both scored 94, Spider-Man 2, uh, Superman the movie both scored 93%, Avengers and Lo Logan both scored 92 Guardians of the Galaxy and X-Men Days of Future Past both scored 91 and Captain America Civil War scored 90%. Seriously? 90%. If we include animation in the mix, The Incredible scored 97, the highest of any superhero film in live action or animation, and the animated Lego Batman scored 90. 
This means Wonder Woman, if it remains above 90%, as appears likely, will become one of the top best reviewed superhero movies in history. If the tomato meter remains in the 93-95% range, then it will actually be one of the top five on the list. It certainly deserves it, as it's one of the finest origin films and among the overall best of its genre. The high score and certified fresh ratings are due to the fact that Wonder Woman bridges a lot of preferences to provide so much terrific storytelling, charismatic characters with good chemistry together and exciting action and unique ideas that it exceeded most everyone's expectations and won their hearts and minds. Warner made the right choice when, after the first screening of a handful of critics of which I was luckily to be one at the studio. They allowed immediate social media reactions. The subsequent flood of acclaim convinced the studios to eventually move up the review embargo by several days. And once again, they were rewarded by a steadily, steady drumbeat of praise, coinciding with the final week's marketing blitz. Despite some early concerns in the press and among fans that Wonder Woman's marketing was waiting too long to get started, no, thought everything was brilliant. Still two weeks to go before the film came out, and then you know, then it came out. Um, and advertising content at DC. When the marketing kicked off, it was a blitz of awe-inspiring posters, spectacular trailers, TV spots, whirlwind fan events, and other promotions were outpacing Suicide, Suicide Squad and helped boost awareness and excitement in the public. The result: the non-stop marketing sprint towards opening weekend. Plus, the wave of positive reviews and media excitement combined with rising public buzz to turn Wonder Woman into the most anticipated summer movie for audience. According to Fandango's very reliable polling data. Obviously, we've, we've seen occasionally angry and rude remarks on social media from dudes who resent the attention Wonder Woman getting as a female-driven film. Am I to blame that? I don't think so. Luckily, that's um, as an exception instead of a rule and most fans, even male fans who otherwise complain about politics okay I don't know thing about politics uh, and superhero movies and act sceptical of progressive uh, priatic in art sorry about that uh, embracing Wonder Woman's straightforward faithfulness to the character and powerful action driven storyteller as I mentioned in my view it's a superhero film that unites Normally, uh, desperate or conflicting preferences in the genre, and it won't matter whether a viewer is conservative or liberal or middle of the road, nor whether they pref uh, the preference lean towards what we've already seen in the DCU, or towards Marvel, or towards the X-Men or Spider-Man franchise approaches. Most are going to find much to love and root for Wonder Woman. The importance of certified fresh ratings are tomato, uh, rotten fresh tomatoes uh, and the most anticipated status at Fango can't be underestimated. The vast majority of audience for superhero movies are not comic book readers or long time fans but rather ordinary members of the mainstream public. They are only people who see only three or so movies in theatres during an entire year and they aren't watching multiple online trailers or reading all the views for films. They listen to what their friends and family say about a movie. They check out the Rotten Tomato score and they maybe see a TV trailer during prime time. They don't have time to dive deep into new releases so a new brand with a high score on the easily recognisable tomato meter plus some positive water cooler buzz is going to stand out in their minds above the rest of the pack when they walk into a theatre and make the last minute decision about what movie they want to see. See, we are the small percentage. I have said that umpteen times. It doesn't matter if John Campion, Collider or whatever YouTube people out there, we are a small percentage. 
we're the ones that take a, a an interest in just about every every film that comes out especially as comic book fans you know but there are movie fans that do um are fans of any genre but to be honest for anyone relying on anyone to to tell them if a film is good or bad well that is bad to be honest you know if you're having to rely on critics to tell you to see this film or not to see this film then no the only way i would advise anyone um, to pick a film is find out what the story is and if the story interests you then go and see it not if somebody says the film is bad or good I bet you this is what this person's about to say now now positive reviews don't automatically translate into big office um, big box office any more than bad reviews translate into box office failure likewise positive buzz doesn't always mean a big opening weekend and an established brand name doesn't instantly go to the high interest in ticket sales but when you have a combination of all these things a major IP that gets critical acclaim and constant positive buzz then things start to look far better and when those things combine to, to turn a particular picture into highly anticipated must see release then it's partly time at the studio and let's be clear being tomato meter certified fresh and fandango's most anticipated added to wonder woman's global ip is actually a combination of three important brands combining to create exponentially rising buzz <sighs> wonder woman will also benefit in the long term from the fact that everyone has been playing it conservative with the tracking and estimate allowing Warner to keep expectations at more manageable levels. The early 65 million domestic tracking figure has given way to 85 million prediction but that's still a respectable yet modest estimate for a super for a summer superhero blockbuster. That's got near universal acclaim that is certified fresh and that is the most anticipated movie for audience of the entire summer slate. Again, dishing all that um, clickbait stuff about how it's only estimated at a small bit. It's the norm. Okay. In short, any site that tells you that it's only such and such ex expectations of the film, then just you think of it, well, that not. I'm not falling for that, that's just the norm. See if you start saying that to every clickbait thing, that's just the norm, that's just the norm. We'll wait until a week before the film comes out. That's when you get closer to the truth. Uh, granted, 85 million domestic tracking would still translate into a final cube north of 200 million and worldwide box office to the tune of 600 700 million depending on its legs so that so that would be a great start and fine finish for wonder woman if it pans out that way but we are surely looking um should are looking at an actual opening weekend in the 100 plus million range i personally expect something around 110 million with 120 million as my highest end guess right now considering what's really happening for the film's reputation and public interest with just over 24 hours thursday night screening begin and less than 40 hours before the official uh, start of the opening weekend patty jenkins superhero film wonder woman rides a wave of critical acclaim and grown audience buzz on its way to what appears to be a hundred plus million domestic bow just for some anisidio and it, i'm not even going to try and say that word anisodio no no i'm not even going there okay Probably if it was during the day, my senses are wired, I'd probably say that name. Uh, evidence to consider, I've seen Wonder Woman three times now, 
not only with the smaller group a few weeks ago, but also at two big screenings full of film critics, as well as regular folks from the public at large. And I've talked to people at fan screenings and seen the overall reaction from those events too. The overwhelming takeaway is that people are falling in love with this film and it plays well to all ages and both genres and that the people say they want to see it again and that's the sort of reaction students love to see and it's just some final seasoning to add to the recipe of enthusiastic critical reactions, brand, identity, high levels of public anticipation and a strong marketing push that's getting better and more compelling headed into an opening weekend. If, by opening day, most reviews are in and Wonder Woman is still satisfied fresh and topping Fandango's polls and ticket sales, it's going to blow past box office estimates and wind up high on most everyone's rewritten uh, list of the greatest superhero movies of all time. <sighs> What do we take from that? Some haters are going to come across and say, right, and we can see it just now, oh, Patty Jenkins done a good job, and move her, get her, do Justice League or whatever. Listen, Zack Snyder helped with Wonder Woman, as I said many times. He's done 90% of Justice League. Joss Whedon's on board to done good things over at Marvel and, and stuff like that. And he's doing Bart Girl who's got now an invested interest in DC. I honestly deep down believe that um, they're on the right track. Um, not that they were ever off the right track, but as I've said many times before, I would rather myself dislike a film and the world love it rather than the world hate it and I'm the only one that liked it. I want my heroes to do well to be the coolest that I know they already are. So this is Man of Steel fan. Gives hope. Hoping I'll shut up until my my review. So I'll post the wee video. Um, with my reaction coming out. It's not going to be any better than um, Mark Hughes' uh, report from, from Forbes. Or oh, it's not going to be better. It's just going to be grounded. It's just going to be me, Joe Public, uh, giving you his reaction and later on his review. So please... And those people that are sending in messages, please, I'll get over to your messages maybe in the next video or two and I'll read them out and I'll answer them and stuff like that. Uh, and please, um, share, if you remember the page, please share and subscribe. Let's keep the positive feed of the page going. Let's keep the positive uh, YouTube thing going. Let's all get out there, DC positive fans. Let's get talking. Thanks very much for uh, for taking the road with us. <laughs>